Good day everyone! Welcome back to another exciting and fun food learning on our Gen Bio class. Once again, I am Sir AJ and I'll be your teacher for today's discussion. Before anything else, let's have a short review about our previous topic regarding the cell types, the animal and the plant tissues. Now, as a part of our review, we are going to have a short picture analysis. I'll be posting uh, different pictures. All you have to do is to identify the tissue being shown in each slide. So, are you ready? Okay, let's have the first one. What do you think is that? Okay, that is correct. That is a columnar epithelial tissue. How about the second one? Okay, that is correct. That is a squamous epithelial tissue. How about the third picture? Okay, you hit it right. That is a cuboidal epithelial tissue. Let's have now the second batch of pictures. The first one, what do you think is that? Okay, that is correct. That is a smooth muscle tissue. The second one, okay, we have the skeletal muscle tissue. And the third one, okay, that is a cardiac muscle tissue. Then let's proceed to the last batch of pictures. The first one, so they are present in the plant. Okay, we have the parenchyma tissue. Next, we have the, alright, we have the parenchyma tissue. And the third one is, okay, we have the sclerenchyma tissue. Now, before proceeding to our new lesson for today, let's have a short DYD, or do you know that, okay? I have here some tomatoes, corns, and apples. Now, actually, they are not just the normal apples, tomatoes, and corns that we could see in the market or in the grocery stores. Actually, these tomatoes are known as the flavor saver tomatoes. These are what we call the BT corns, and these are the Arctic apples. So what is something different with this a group of uh, fruits? The first one is the flavor saver tomatoes. They are actually genetically modified tomatoes. Thus, these tomatoes have longer and more flavorful shelf life than the normal tomatoes due to the presence of gene that reduces the production of polygalacturons. So, the cell wall degrading enzyme responsible for the fruit ripening. Now, the second one is the BT corns. BT stands for the Bacillus thuringiensis. So, this is a soil bacterium that produces insecticidal toxins. So, genes from the BT can be inserted into crop plants such as corns to make them capable of producing an insecticidal toxins and therefore resistant to certain pests. And then the last one are the Arctic apples. So this Arctic apples uses a gene splicing uh, or gene silencing technology wherein the target is the gene in the apple that controls the production of the enzyme that makes it turn round. So in short, these are what we call the genetically modified organisms or the GMO. And it has something to do with our topic for this afternoon. Okay, this is actually related because our topic for this uh, day is about the cell modifications, okay? Let me share with you first our learning objectives. The first one is explain cell modification. The second one, differentiate the three types of cell modification. And the third one, know the importance of the cell modification in the cell adaptation in order for it to survive. Now, what is a cell modification? It is the change in the structure of a cell to carry out specialized or specific function. It enables the cell to perform differently and the modification actually occur after the cell division. Now, basically, there are three types of cell modification. The first one is the apical, the second one is the basal, and the third one is the lateral modification. And let us discuss them one by one, starting with the apical modification. It is found on the apical, on the apex, or the apical surface of the cell. The main function of this apical modification for cell is for absorption, for locomotion, or for movement, and of course for secretion. Now, there are four types of apical modifications in cells. We have the cilia, the flagella, the microvilli, and the pseudocodes. And what are those? Starting with the cilia. 
they are hair-like structures attached to the surface of the cell and has a wave-like motion. It is classified into two. We have the motile cilia and the non-motel cilia. So basically, motile is capable of moving or movement while non-motel is not. Examples of motel cilia are can be found in the lining of our lungs. So hair-like projections called cilia line the primary bronchus to remove microbes and debris from the interior of the lungs. So especially those unwanted materials or foreign materials that are actually uh, penetrating the lungs or try to go to our lungs, it will be removed through the help of the motile cilia. Now, this cilia, it is the image of the motile cilia under an electron microscope. Another example of motile cilia can be found in the fallopian tube of females. So, this cilia he uh, helps the egg cells to go to the uterus during the menstruation cycle. Uh, how about non-motile cilia? So, we have the non-motile cilia found on our nose, okay? And we also have the non-motile cilia that can be found in our eyes, okay? Cilia can also be found in some uh, lower organisms such as in paramecium, which is the main function is for locomotion. So, these tiny hair-like structures on the sides of the paramecium are the cilia that aids in locomotion or for engulfing its prey. Now, the next type of apical modification is the flagella. This is a whip-like modification that acts like a propeller and it's primarily for locomotion or for movement. Now, this is the, piece, uh, the typical uh, structure of a flagella but actually there are different types of flagellation. We have the atricus, the monotricus, the photricus, amphitricus, the feritricus, and the amphilophotricus. Okay. Flagella can be seen in the sperm cells of males and in the lower form of organisms such as euglena. Okay. So this is actually the difference between a cilia and a flagella. So cilia are slender protuberances that project from the much larger cell body. However, when we say flagella, they are whip-like or lash-like appendage that protrudes from the cell body. Now, the third type of apical modification are the microvilli. The microvilli are attached to the finger-like projections called villi. They increase the rate of absorption in our intestines for secretion and for cellular adhesion. Now, this is the image of the microvilli. So, we have here our intestines, the lining of our intestines, okay? And then the close-up picture, we have now the villi or the finger-like projections. And then on the villi, we have here the small parts known as the microvilli that aids in the absorption of nutrients, okay? Another image of the microvilli. So, this tiny... A modification on the sides of the villi are what we call the microvilli. And then the last type of apical modification are the pseudopods. They are actually known as false feet. So it enables the organism to make temporary and irregular loops, which actually they use it for movement and to engulf prey. Now the best example of bacteria that has pseudopods are the amoeba. Okay, so as you can see on the pictures, these uh, protruding uh, parts are what we call the false feet or the pseudopods. Okay, and this is just a simple process on how the amoeba uses pseudopods to engulf prey. So we have the amoeba, and we have the prey, the green one, and then we also have now the pseudopods or the false feet trying to engulf this prey. Now, in the process called phagocytosis, the prey was already engulfed or inside the cell or the amoeba. And then it will be stored in the part of the amoeba, which is the food vacuum. Alright. Now, let's now move on to the second type of modification. After the apical, we have the basal modification. These are specialized structures found at the basal surface of the cell. And it facilitates stable adhesion of basal cells to basement membrane. Now, a very good example of this basal modification can be seen in two, two the hemidesmosomes. So, in this picture, this is the hemidesmosomes, which actually helps in the attachment or for cellular adhesion. Okay? 
another uh, illustration of the hemidesmosome. So hemidesmosomes attach a cell to extracellular structures such as the protein fibers in the basement membrane. So this is the basement membrane. And then, the last type of modification is the lateral modification. They are also known as cell junctions. So they are specialized structures that serves as intercellular connection between two adjacent cells. Now, basically, there are three types of lateral modification. We have the tight junctions, we have the adhering junctions, and we have the gap junctions. Let's try to discuss them one by one. Tight junctions help two adjacent cells tightly. It prevents a leakage of materials between cells and act as a water seal. Now, the second type is the adhering junctions. So, it fastens cells together and provides a strong mechanical attachment to the adjacent cell. And then the last, the gap junctions. It allows the direct flow of molecules between cells and connect two cells directly from the cytoplasm. Now, this is now the image of the cell. We have the first cell and we have the second cell. Actually, when we say lateral, it's on the side, okay? So we have here the tight junctions, we have here the adhering junctions, and then the last, we have the gap junctions. So basically, this is very important for the interconnection between two cells, alright? Let's have now have our uh, key concepts, okay? Again, we have three types of modification. We have the apical, the basal, and the lateral modification. And the apical, we have cilia, flagella, the microvilli, and the pseudopods. Under the basal modification, we have hemidesmosomes. And for lateral modification, we have the lateral, the type, and we have the gap, gap junctions. Or we also have the adhering junctions. Okay. Now, for our references, these are the references from the or the sources of the pictures from the internet as well as the learning module for senior high school general biology from WebEd. So, do you have any questions? Okay. So, for your offline activity, so what can I do? All you have to do is to upload your file on our respective Google Drive. So, the question or the situation is, due to the pandemic brought by COVID-19, people are severely devastated. Worldwide economic is crashing, people are dying, and the world is changing. If you are given the chance to modify one part of your body, just like how our cells in our body experience modification, to cope up with the current global situation, what part is it and how are you going to modify it in order to adapt and survive? So it's time for you to uh, activate your imagination about uh, this uh, situation, alright? Okay. So if you don't have questions, I think that's all for today. So thank you so much and God bless us all.